this on. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the makerspace. Behind the scenes at the makerspace. Let's uh, let's go to the makerspace. Whoa, we're walking kind of fast. What is in that drawer? So welcome to Behind the Scenes at the Libraries, where we take you into our spaces and show you some of the magic behind the curtains. I'm the host right now, David Whitberry. I'm a librarian here at NC State University Libraries in the Learning Spaces and Services Department. And today, we're going to be talking about the makerspace at Hill Library and learn what's in those drawers in the Hill Library makerspace. And we're joined today by the manager of the library's makerspace, Justin Haynes. Hey, everybody. Welcome, Justin. Thanks for being here. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, so let's go on that journey back to the makerspace. And why don't you set the scene for us, Justin, about um, what is the makerspace, who is it for, and how, do you, how does one get access to the makerspace? Yeah, so the Makerspace is a, an open access workshop, essentially, where any student, faculty, or staff member here at NC State can go through our online safety orientation and then come in and have access to almost all the tools and technologies in that space. There's a few exceptions to that that are staff-mediated, but getting your hands on the equipment yourself, learning how to 3D print or sew or solder, any of those kind of maker skills that you might um, have heard of before or hopefully after this video will recognize. So pretty easy to find us. We're on the first floor of uh, Hill Library. Uh, if you come up the Brickyard entrance, look at the access desk, just turn a little to your left and you, you'll see us right there with the glass walls that we're uh, showing right now. So you can kind of see what the makerspace is before you even step inside. Now, I feel like the thing that people often associate with the makerspace is 3D printing. I think we should probably address 3D printing right off the bat because I think a lot of people are probably interested in that. How does how does 3D printing work in the, in the makerspace? Well, you you were definitely right. That is what most people think of first yeah. when they think of a makerspace. Um, it's our most popular tool by far. You can see we have a lot of them in our room. Um, printing here um, in the makerspace is pretty easy. Um, after taking that orientation, you can kind of come in and this makerspace is always staffed with at least one um, staff member. So you can come in with no experience and we can walk you through it the first time, the first time or two, the first 12 times, whatever it takes before you get the hang of it. And this semester we're still offering a print service for um, class assignments and research-based prints. So on the library's website you can submit your files so that we can uh, kind of print those for you in a timely manner. Awesome. But you can also come in and get that hands-on experience and learn how to print yourself, which is pretty valuable in my, in my opinion. That's awesome. And, and, and did you say how much it costs? Uh, the cost is completely free, which is oh, that's awesome. uh, really great. It allows more people to get access to these machines without having another barrier in their way. That's great. So we're, we're looking at these 3D printers and they're, uh, with, what are they on top of? What, what's the stuff underneath the 3D printers here? So our 3D printers sit atop our cabinet, and those cabinets are actually lockers that you can check out for oh, awesome. uh, two weeks at a time. So you're working on a project, and you don't want to carry it across campus back to your, your dorm or your apartment across town. So we have these lockers that can store all your project materials while you're working on it there. That's great. And we have like 16 of those, so. That's great. Uh, you know pretty good number for what we offer. Um, there are some other lockers throughout the library that we can use, but much less frequently. How, how much are people printing in this space? Is it, is it, do we see dozens? Do we see hundreds over a semester? What's, what's the rate like? Um, we see hundreds, if not thousands, in the semester. Wow. I believe in the last semester we printed um, on our record, not counting in-person prints, something like 1,200 prints wow. um, on our machine. So our machines so turn cool. on in the morning, and they, they don't get turned off until usually I come in the next morning, um, running overnight even sometimes. I love um, just working in the library. When I walk by this wall, you can see all the cool things being printed and 
another great advantage that, that glass wall is yeah. people um, that might not understand what 3D printing is or how it works can kind of walk by that first time. That's so cool. You can kind of see the vending machines in the background. So we get a lot of foot traffic uh -huh. coming around this hallway. Yeah. Um, what, what's that? What's that? That guy up in the corner. Oh, the the our skeleton. Oh yeah. It's part of our tech lending program. Yeah, you know, we'll talk about t tech lending. I'm sure more. That's awesome. When we look at some of the stuff in drawers. Okay, so I was walking around, and there's a lot of stuff on walls and tables, and there's this beautiful uh, wall of tools here. Tell me, tell me some, something about these tools. Yeah, so this is our brand new tool wall this semester. We refreshed um, all the tools in the Makerspace. Makerspace opened six years ago now, and we had uh, some of the original tools. So time to refresh them, bring them a little bit more on brand with what people think of when they think of state. So uh, on this wall, you'll find everything from your basic screwdrivers and hammers up to some, some specialty tools for 3D printing. and. Um, sanding 3D prints. My f one of my favorite tools on this wall, yeah. down in the lower left-hand corner right now, is the nail file that you can kind of see there. Nail files are great for sanding 3D prints. They're they're inexpensive, and um, you can kind of bend them more than the steel files that are next to them. So, so the the those are those are like um, it's like metal sandpaper. Or what what do you is it? So those are. For scraping away material yeah, that you're so, working with? Or? So when you're 3D printing, sometimes you have areas that are a little rough or you have support areas that leave behind some residue that yeah. isn't so smooth. So getting those um, prints, that post-processing side of it, a lot of these tools on this wall are for that. But we also have your basic you know, scissors, your pair of pliers to kind of grab things out. Um, all those things are mallet selection down on the bottom. That's, that's a nice mallet selection. So. We've, we've seen some people use some screwdrivers as hammers, so we figured we should probably get <laughs> some new ones. Okay, what's this tool? So this is our one tool in the space that um, patrons would not have hands-on access to. Um, this is our laser cutter. Uh, we got this a couple years ago, uh, 32 by 18 inch print bed there, so we can actually cut out different materials, acrylic, wood. You can kind of see a scrap project of the state outline of North Carolina so in there. Wh what? What are why are people cutting stuff and what does that make when when they cut it? Yeah, so uh, a lot of two D objects are what we're what we're making out of that. Um, we've seen elevations where you can kind of stack them up on top of each other for projects over in the design school. Uh, a lot of keychains. If you've ever seen a library table in an event, you've probably seen a, a keychain that's been made on uh, this machine. So uh -huh. a lot of those um, for school. You know, school-wise and research-wise, we've even had people where they might have a part that's two hundred dollars uh -huh. to order from a company that just holds vials, and we can laser cut that in about twenty minutes that's, that's with cool. some files. So saving some money on the research side as well, helping out our folks in those departments. So that looks like another laser printer or, or 3D printer? So similar to the 3D printer, except for think of it in complete opposite sense. So a 3D printer is additive manufacturing. You're adding material. Uh -huh. This, as well as the laser, is actually subtractive manufacturing, okay. where you're taking material away. So you're starting with a block of foam, or in our case with these, mostly copper plates, and you're removing material. Um, this is called a milling machine. Um, that motor you can kind of see in the center there uh -huh. attaches to um, a milling bit, which looks just like a drill so bit. Does it, is it move in X, Y, and Z? It moves in three yeah, dimensions. Yeah. Just the same similar uh, movement as a 3D printer. Okay. It's just instead of hot plastic coming out like a hot glue gun, imagine uh, having a drill um, attached to the end of it. That's cool. And then there's this cricket. Yeah, so one of our newer pieces of tech in the space, but probably becoming one of the more popular ones is our Cricut um, vinyl cutter. So stickers for your laptop, the back of your car, anything like that. Um, awesome. Card stock to make greeting cards. Yeah. Um, we see a lot, of, a lot of those. We can even do leather and other like harder materials on this machine, which is so really kind of cool. It's cutting stuff kind of like a laser cutter, but with a knife or something? Yeah, with a knife, um, hobby blade, you can k even kind of serrate the edges of it, so you can kind of like fold um, some even wood, that's, even, which is kind of cool. That's very neat. 
And this looks like our sewing machine. So that is our uh, digital embroidery machine. So very similar to what, you know, if you've ever seen hand embroidery hoops, this works in a similar way. Uh, it has hoops and you program it on our laptops to be able to so um, embroider a shirt. or Like I could put any design I want on a shirt? Uh, like Pretty much. Um, yeah. You know, there are some copyright laws and stuff <laughs> like that that we ask people to make sure they're so following. So I can't like make my own Mr. Wolf. It's a shirt you know, in there. It's probably a little frowned upon. Okay. I'm sure we, you know, we've had things sneak past us, but yeah. um, it is kind of cool to make patches awesome. for your book bag or anything like that. And these looks like more sewing machines. These are your typical sewing machines. Um, what so makes this one different than those other two? So the first two we saw are more hobby grade. So that's uh -huh. what you're going to mostly likely see at your, your house or something like that. Um, this one here is fully made of metal. Every component on it besides the dials there are metal. Um, it's more an industrial mid-level machine, so it can do harder materials. This is what, you know, if you're doing like denim or some even lighter weight leathers, you can kind of get by with this. So heavyweight materials, specialty materials that might not work so well on your, your hobby grade machine. That's cool. You're kind of just elevating what, what those can do. And then there's this mysterious gray machine in the corner. What does that do? Th this corner machine, um, kind of one of our more least used items in the space, and it's one of my favorite items in the space. That's our vacuum former. So whether you make a mold on the 3D printer or you cut it out of a block of wood or even, you know, there's workshops I've seen online where people cut potatoes uh -huh. uh, because it's easy to cut with a, a regular knife and then um, you heat up a piece of plastic with the element up top works a lot like a toaster oven if you can kind of imagine that yeah, yeah. Um, it heats up plastic and that plastic starts to almost melt it gets really pliable we push it down and the vacuum part of the former you hook yes. the vacuum machine up when you push that down the vacuum um, turns on it sucks out all that air and then you have a nice uh, repeatable mold that you can pour soap, yeah. resin, uh, concrete, even so chocolate. So you're, you're taking a solid object and then you're making a, a mold of that solid object and you have a void that you can then fill with material or something. Correct. We okay. have a few different types of plastic. Colin wants to know if we provide the potatoes for Ooh. that. We don't provide the potatoes. I'm sure somewhere on uh, campus. It is NC State, so we're all about potatoes, especially sweet potatoes, so... You know, yeah. it, I'm sure they're somewhere on campus with, with potatoes. Um, the, the different types of plastic you can use in this. So sometimes if you need, um, you know, just repeated props or something like that, you can use like a more rigid plastic that can handle paint. Yeah. We have food safe plastic. So if you want to make a mold and then fill it with chocolate or something like that. And it's just mm, chocolate. kind of repeatability. It's some more desktop manufacturing That's cool. items. That's a hidden gem there in that corner. And there's this big white thing. Uh, so those those robot robot arm looking esque items there are our ventilation throughout the space. Gotcha. We have, um, I believe, eight of those in the space that uh, remove any smoke if you're soldering or working with the vacuum form. Any of those odors that uh, might be present in the space with That's cool. you know melting plastic and things like that. Some three D printing filament that we use can put off some harmful fumes. So. We, want, we like to set those up underneath those as well. Um, so I'm that sure. partnered with the laser cutter filter kind of removes all the bad air from the space. And uh, there's all these little boxes, female banana plugs, flip flops. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like a lot of resistors, a lot of electronics right over here. These are kind of our, we're in our electronics components area here. And there mm -hmm. are a lot of, you know, jargon terms on on here. But there are people that um, are specifically looking for certain things or certain level resistors that um, they need for their project. So uh, we're trying to label these the best we can. Uh, you'll probably see here in a little bit that those labels aren't always 100% accurate. We <laughs> kind of help rely. Some wire strippers, wire, some um, voltage meters. Voltage like meters. We what, have those. What are, what did, what's, this, this look like sort of wire protector things? Or? Yeah, so right there we've got a few things. The, the thing on top is called a pair of helping hands. The little things look a little oh, yeah. crab claws. 
So, so if you're like working on a little project. You if you're you're working soldering a little project or something like that, it's just a, one of the many types of clamps we have in the space. Um, underneath that are some connector plugs. Okay. And then, yeah, underneath that, those are um, what's called heat shrink. So when you solder two pieces together, um, you don't want to have that exposed area of wire showing. That's so awesome. it helps insulate That's that. Useful. And then looks like solder, uh, so much solder, so much tape. This is our kind of soldering station here where we have our two um, soldering machines, soldering irons, then everything you should need to get started soldering. So wire, we have the... Um, well, so what, if, what if I'm just like, I don't, I think it's been 30 years since I soldered. How, what, <laughs> how, how do I approach this thing? So uh, another great part is almost all members of my staff have been trained on how to do this, and not only that, how to kind of teach you. So we have some example projects that we can lead you through the first time or two getting back into the hang of it, along with a handout that we have as well. So oh, that's, um, that's great. You know, whether that's just cutting off. We have so much wire and stuff like that in the space so that you can get practice with, you know, soldering two pieces of wire together before you have to do it on your project. You see the cutting mats there on the table. Yeah. We like to protect our tabletops as much as we can, yeah. especially when you're dealing with hot objects like soldering irons and um, other other tools from the tool wall earlier. Now you got speakers. You got some conductive ink. I conductive. love those. <laughs> so that's like it, it, it's it's a yeah, let's see. Dave is saying I tried to teach myself soldering for a recent project that did not go super well. It sounds like. Dave needs to get to the makerspace and get a consultation. Dave could definitely. Um, I, what what is the secret? Are you supposed to heat the thing you're soldering, not the solder? Or I can't remember. There's like some some secret. Yeah. There. So if you have your soldering iron, you can actually heat up whatever you're trying to solder from the backside. Uh huh. And so then when you apply your solder to that object, it flows onto that instead of the iron. We see a lot of times people try to put it on the iron and then like use it like a glue and like paste it onto the wires they need. Uh -huh. So, uh, But yeah, Dave, you could definitely stop by the maker space so we can help you out. You could request a technology consultation online and we can uh, set up a time to meet, either, whatever works. So we got a lot of wires and speakers and all sorts of cool stuff in there, some clamps and... A lot of components. That's some of this is from old projects that we've just kind of been given and uh -huh. we've you know, worked in. These extension cords here are super beneficial in the space. You pull them down. It allows us to have power anywhere in the space. Um, everything on, in the maker space is mobile. Everything's on wheels, the tables, um, even the so the power also needs to be flexible. You got rulers and a level and an iron and some some other old electronic kits are in there peeking <laughs> in. Got a vacuum cleaner with eyes, googly eyes. We got, let's see, embroidery thread. And this is moving a little fast. Yeah. Uh, um, looks like embroidery thread, lots of sewing So there, stuff. there's a big difference between embroidery and sewing. Uh -huh. um, and one of the things is the threads that we use for those machines have to be separated because it can mess up those machines. So we try to keep those separated. Um, you can kind of okay. tell a difference when you look at them side by side. So lots of labels on everything. Iron on vinyl, I didn't mention earlier, but uh, the, the Cricut can also do iron on vinyl. We have that iron. So like to iron on a shirt? Yep. Or a that? Shirt, book bag. Nice. Um, lots of um, cutting supplies. And stuff, yep. looks like. More supplies. More supplies. Power cables, everything you might need for to use those machines. Oh, no, yep. I know these guys. <laughs> I'm an expert button maker, our, so... It might be our second most popular tool in the space behind the 3D printer is our button maker supplies. There's our iron... Oh, okay, um, so that's for for uh, ironing and... Uh, yeah, you don't want to use your, your regular household iron yeah. like you saw earlier um, for okay. the iron on vinyl because those irons don't heat up the same throughout the whole... There's a hot point. You have an even vinyl iron. Yep, the, the, these are like 8 inch by 8 inch plates that you kind of... Press down. I agree with Colin. Some great labels. There's book binding. So the, up top is some of our workshops that we've done in the past. That's and work. That's cool. Yeah, book binding. Uh, our large format vinyl cutter. So this works a lot similar to the Cricut, but much larger scale. Uh, this one is, the Cricut usually operates between 12 inch and 12 inch, uh -huh. 12 by 24. This width is 24 inches. 
and the length is however long you have in vinyl. So that's that's exciting. If um, you can do do a big big sign. Big signs. We've done some signage here, digital media lab signage, which I'm I'm sure is going to be on a future episode. Yeah. Um, you might see that that vinyl there. And that came from that vinyl cutter. And that came from that vinyl cutter. That's the amazing. That's shot great. back for the the vacuum former. Um, googly eyes, you mentioned. Yeah. My students love putting googly eyes on <laughs> everything. So. Uh, I love this book wall because I'm a librarian, so gotta love the books. So there's, there's, looks like there's a nice collection of books in the back here. And the, actually, this is in the front of the, the space. Yeah, we've jumped back up to the front of the room here. And, you know, like you said, we are, we are in a library, so we do need to um, make sure we have some books in the space. And we have a variety of different things, books, magazines. It's all that cool. there um, and we usually will up front we have our it's called our tinkering table and we have some books set out specifically that you can flip through that partners with what we're kind of featuring this month. I think this month we That's have nice. le uh, Legos out so sweet and um, okay so looks like craft supplies are first what is in that drawer and so I saw these drawers with nice labels on them and I opened some and this yeah. first one looks like twine. So, um, oftentimes in makerspace, we for forget that like we can do this type of crafting. Uh -huh. So, like, people often don't assume we have these drawers. Which I'm glad you started with these. Uh, they are the first drawers you kind of come across in the space. And in here, you have rope and twine and elastic and all these brands. Um, again, more labels. Trying to make that's elastic there, so uh -huh. we use some of that when we made yeah. face shields back at the beginning of the pandemic. Foam sheets, butcher twine because it doesn't stretch. Uh, a, it looks like a corner cutter. It's a corner cutter, um, so you can like round edges of paper and, and um, pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners, my favorite. Oh, that's a must-have in a craft <laughs> drawer. And then there is some putty of some sort. Some like. yeah, like modal. Uh, not mold. Uh, you can mold this putty into different shapes and uh, it hardens. That's um, very cool. Which is kind of the useful staple removers, p hole punches, typical kind of craft stuff that you might need. Nice, nice pun there, Colin. Colin re prefers sharp corners. Okay. Nah. Uh, love post it notes and pens and looks like scissors, scissors paint brushes. Popsicle sticks Possible. galore. You gotta have popsicle sticks. You'll always find some Brushes. random tape and scissors uh -huh. throughout the space. A glue stick. Nice. And then uh, these sewing drawers are, are pretty great. Yeah, so up top here we have a lot of the sewing kind of accessories. That uh, is a, our iron mat. Okay. So that you can iron anywhere in the space and you can iron large projects. We have some rotary cutters there on the left so to cut your fabric more easily. Um, that's actually a scissor sharpener there. Oh, okay. I, I was so wondering about that. Fabric scissors are need to stay sharp, and because oftentimes in our space they'll get used for other things accidentally, so having a way of resharpening them. Some great um, hidden gems in here, including I think one of these. This is this looked like needles, I think, in that in that box to me. Yep. But then there, this stuff. Tell me about what's what's going on with this stuff. So that's what's considered e-textile. So embedding electronics into these wearable devices. So those are actually LEDs and. Um, so these are for boards. for this is sewing. This we haven't sort of ventured into electronics. We're still in sewing. So this is stuff that's sewn. Correct. You can use uh, in that box. But there's also some conductive thread, so you can actually um, sew this into your garments, which is nice. Very neat. Um, some popular examples from NC State, um, the pole stress from oh, that, it, close to 10 years ago at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah. But after after this Twitch stream, go ch go Google the pole stress and you kind of see an example of what we like. Uh, that's, that's great. E this looks like a contact paper or some kind of sticky paper. So that um, that is a, uh, what is, it's like a blueprint, but for sewing. Oh, okay, um, gotcha. Very cool. These bins down and here, nice, super uh, nice. Uh, it so looks like Colin's sharing the pull stress. Yeah, the perfect. So this there's an embroidery hoop. Regular hand embroidery hoops. Tons of different materials. And we like to have these scrap materials for you so that 
This is you don't have to learn how to sew on that expensive material you're using for your tablecloth or your curtains that yeah, you're, you're I, making. I, so. I love these boxes of and oh, this was a box labeled cotton, and then there's a um, some more awesome fabric. There was a box in there labeled like leathers. Yep. There's a box of uh, uh, non cotton items. I think this is the non cotton. Non cotton. Yeah, with a. Uh, uh, some really interesting um, sort of stuff seemed like waterproof kind yeah, of Yeah, we have some like waterproof materials in there, yeah. some conductive um, fabrics, um, some like koozie top material that like, like foam. foam. That's great. It, a lot of embroidery materials there, some canvas, some hand embroidery um, floss. So much. So you wouldn't want to use this on like our embroidery machine because uh -huh. it's way too thick. But hand embroidery is a little, a little thicker there. You're doing cross stitch or embroidery, yeah. you can use that. Yeah, that's that's the leather. The leather scraps. Yeah, yeah. That's, it was wild. I didn't. I know we had all these different kinds, of, and just the this the tactile mess too. You know, that oh. was pretty great. And while that's in the sewing drawer, we've seen that in this kind of felt here used in other projects where people are using it for helmet chin straps they might print. Um, mm -hmm. Someone printed Thor's hammer and they wrapped the handle in Col that Colin's leather. Colin's asking about etching the, the straps. Can you etch leather in the, so in the uh, laser cutter? The laser can etch leather. Um, right now it's not on our kind of uh, material list. Uh -huh. um, everything on our laser does have to be provided by us. I kind of glossed over that earlier um, for safety reasons, but uh, the Cricut can actually emboss leather. Um, you can you know, use a wood burner or something like that to even um, do that kind of stamping on the leather. Um, but, you, you know, it's some, if you have a project where you want to do that, reach out. We can kind of awesome. we can talk and um, uh, do that. Okay, so this is a drawer um, tools, I guess. Yeah, this is our m kind of miscellaneous tool drawer, stuff that can't fit on the tool wall or we got measurement mm -hmm. box. Um, there's some tools. That, uh, that one was frightening. Yeah, so you kind of <laughs> in our kind of our cutting toolbox there. Okay, um, so that that looks like that's a. Pretty much cut anything. Yeah, <laughs> some of these things. Those are kind of more sheer. So if you're cutting okay. like pieces of metal. Oh, gotcha. Um, so it really is for cutting metal. Yeah, we've had some projects where people want to use like chicken wire and uh -huh. things like that, and our normal scissors are wire cutters you don't really want to use. Yeah. Those big orange scary ones are for like PVC pipe. Uh huh. The first one is also like a leather punch. Is the first one you had. This this one's this box said I fix it, which I kind of associate them with. Um, breaking into your MacBook or you know, replace the battery, is yeah. that? Yeah, this kit here um, has like 64 or something different bits that you can use to open almost any case or, um, you know, sunglasses repair, that sort of thing that you might need. You know, if you're doing, you're fixing your phone screen, digital calipers, which we also, that's an item we have in tech lending uh -huh. as well. Um, more, more digital calipers. So you can take some precise <laughs> measurements. And so I'm sh you might come across a dead battery or two. And we have batteries in the space in our electronics bin. So if you come across one, just let us know. We can replace it. Um, so you take some pretty precise measurements. These this kind of partners with the iFixit kit. Okay. Um, and you it's get like all sorts of tweezers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so precision tweezers. So... Um, you know, we've even had to use these a time or two to, if you get a splinter in the space or something. Clamps, clamps, clamps. Yeah. I like this drawer. You know, there's there's something appealing <laughs> about yeah. clamps and the way they work. And and also when you need a clamp, like having the right size clamp and the right yeah. the right way to fix it to the, the, the table or something. I, I don't know. There's something about having the right tool. In, in my spare time, I do a lot of woodworking, and a few of my students do as well. And um, you know, there's a saying that you can never have too many clamps, and that, <laughs> that's very true. These, um, these clamps are fun. Holding something down, and it's also a safety-related thing where we don't yeah. want someone holding down a piece of plastic or wood while they're drilling into it or cutting. Uh -huh. So, here's. Yeah. I think I attempt to make some art here with clamps. There's a suction clamp here. Yeah, a desktop like vice suction. Uh -huh. 
Um, not this, used a whole lot. A, the quick clamp here. Yeah, this, those are... There's, there's my sculpture. Uh, there's your uh, 3D art. Clamp work. Yeah. But yeah, variety of clamps as well. Mystery electronics. <laughs> it's an unlabeled drawer. Unlabeled. But filled with uh, some some cool things, I think. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff that's in this is stuff that, you know, has kind of been harvested off of old projects that people have left or uh -huh. um, old... Those were yeah. fans, those, I think. Those were fans, and these are motors. These are yeah. from old 3D printers that have ah, gone. Wow. So this, those motors are pretty substantial. Yeah. Like, they're not... The, they're not... Um, like, the small motors that yeah. you just saw, that's more what you'd see, like, in a you know a small hobby kit. But those other motors are bigger stepper motors, and you can control them a little bit more um, minute movement so that you can use them for, like, raising and lowering your shades or projects like that, where... Uh, the infrared thermometer. Yeah, it was. People might be familiar with those now. Um, this one has a little uh, laser on it, I think. Yeah. And this is the next kind of step up from this is like a, one of the heat guns that we have in Lending, which works similar way, okay. but you can actually see the what the hot spots are. That's. But yeah, those fans, those motors, a lot of that. Oh, yeah. This look like like power cables for any kind of power. Yeah. Least. We get a lot of weird things that come into space that might not have a power plug or we need to, you know, various plugs and USB to, you know, female um, jumper wires. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it seems like if you're working on an electronics project and you're missing something, Makerspace might, might just have More it. More than likely have it, um, or have had it at some point. Um, yeah. Now in this drawer. Yeah. These, these, are, are, some, these are some really great big LEDs. Yep. Some uh, pre-soldered LEDs, so if you're making projects that need to go down through there. Breadboards so you can prototype your things. Um, might be some solder roll breadboards in there as well. So you can, you can you use those jumper wires to make larger... Larger projects, no, just alligator clips, yeah. and when I guess you need them, like having the right again, like the right color, <laughs> right length, all that yeah. stuff, it's going to be there. So this is the adhesive drawer, which is included all these bunches of rolls of tape. What is that metal um, tape that we that's right on the the front of that drawer? Yeah, so that's some of our copper tape. Um, it is conductive, so we can use them in cards or you can even partner those with you know tabletop surfaces and things like that um so it is tape that it has it's, a conductive copper so layer it to it in an electronics project electronics projects you can partner with one of our old kits like the makey makey and make like touch spots so that you can like play the bongos at, at, you know by touching different spots on the table so uh, uh colin the librarian has suggested uh this this to that for Attaching glue. I, this drawer has so much, so many different types of glue, and I, I appreciated this. I've actually had to use that before. That was a bottle of acetone, yeah. which super I've learned that is good for uh, <laughs> detaching yourself from super glue. Yep. I, just last week, I had. <laughs> there's a reason I ordered a big <laughs> bottle of it. Um, just last week, I accidentally glued myself to a patron's project. So, um, in yeah, so different That's, glues. Super glues. That, that, that was a box of Velcro. Velcro. Like one of my favorite. Um, that big bottle with the blue cap uh -huh. is um, some accelerant for super glue. So you ah. can put super glue on one surface, you spray your accelerant on the other surface, then, you know, a normal yeah, super glue. Yeah, super, super glue. Yeah, like 10, 15 seconds. This makes it like three to five seconds. That's. That's amazing. We have some rivets. What, what so? What do rivets are for? Metal or for? So you can use them for metal. You can use them for wood. Um, attaching, you know, you drill a small hole uh -huh. and you push the rivet through, and use that rivet, the hand rivet gun that you uh -huh. first had, and yeah. it, that pulls a large That's metal the bead. Gun? That's the rivet gun. Okay. You pull that large metal bead up, and it almost mushrooms behind it. So, uh, okay. um, but there's ways you can kind of hack that with a washer, and you can kind of get some some joints out of it. <laughs> um, well, Colin's making the puns. The puns. With, uh, it, it, this is a very riveting drawer. 
Um, there's some grommets there, so if you like on the edges of tarps, you can kind of see. Gotcha. We also have. So is that that has a tool that goes with it? Uh, that is like uh, one of the mallets, really. You okay. Can, it's got a small metal tool that you push down and just. And I appreciate all these the zip ties. Different length zip ties. Yeah, it's those are really popular. If you need to hold something really quick, it doesn't have to be very secure. Zip ties. And uh, some specialty uh, kind of adhesive there. Those okay. are, um, you know, those are just regular screws and nails. But yeah. the, that small box has um, our heat inserts. So with three D printing, you yeah. can actually heat up this piece of metal and push it in to a you know, recess you've designed. Uh -huh. And now you have a way to like attach pro you know, so projects you can, together. So you can, are they, will they take a screw or will the, they? Yeah, they're yeah, threaded so they're on the side. So that, you can attach pull pieces that is together. Wild. So you can really make a nice professional project there. Yeah. They're like trapped nuts. Um, so now we got some power tools, which looked like they were in the staff side. Yeah, so all of our power tools are kept in our staff area um, for a few reasons. One, the big one is you need to mediate some access to these mm -hmm. um, according to our safety plan. And so what we do is you ask for the drill, the Dremel, like you see here, uh -huh. um, and our staff will get that for you and also remind you, you need to be wearing safety glasses anytime you use these power tools. So the drill is a rotor, or the Dremel is a rotary tool, so uh -huh. it spins up really fast, much faster than what your normal drill does. Oh, so well, yeah, what what makes a Dremel different than the, than this cordless drill? That yeah, so there's a few different things you can do with the Dremel that the drill just can't do, right? Um, the Dremel is a drill, but the drill isn't a Dremel. Okay. So um, you can attach, um, you can attach a, a drill bit to those and do some pre you know precise kind of drilling, but also you can attach a sanding wheel so you can sand projects down or smooth. You can even put cutting wheels on them to cut through small pieces of metal or um, you can use them to cut like dowel rods and stuff like that. That's cool. But um, yeah, so it also spins at a higher rate. So it, you know, I wouldn't do it if I was drilling through a two by four, but if I was drilling through a piece of 3D printer material, I'd probably use the Dremel or trying to sand down that surface or you've cut a piece of metal and it's got sharp edges. You can actually smooth that down that's, that's great. with the Dremel. And then what, what are these sort of Cone shaped, I assume drill bits here, and what are those for? Oh, the, the bottom left, those yeah. are called step bits. So if you're drilling through a piece of plastic and you, you aren't sure what kind of hole you need yet, yeah. those slowly kind of creep up onto it until you can kind of get that so exact can, fit. You can get, oh, that's great. That's if you look at them, they, they look like a cone, but they've got little, little indentations, little uh -huh. steps. So they'll you can go a certain distance and then stop there yeah, and yeah. check check something. Unlike a regular drill bit down the bottom right where it's just yeah. a set diameter the whole way. Um, and sometimes the hole you might need is between two of the drill sizes you have. So yeah. you can kind of get by. That, that's that's a, and, and that's the sort of thing, like, I would buy a drill bit like that, use it once. It's so great to have yeah. it in the, in the maker space where you just access it when you need to yeah. access it and you don't have to own it. Um, this looks like it's a drill. So we got uh, the bits. We've got and, uh, some batteries. Nice cordless drill. Um, we've got the the driver bits back there in the corner. Uh -huh. Those, yeah, you can kind of see those yeah, little yeah, steps see, there. The, they look terraced. Oh yeah, driver bits with really long. Yep. So where you can't get a screwdriver in, or you doing a lot yeah. of you know screws, you might want to use this. That's great. That red box down there. I'm not sure if we pull that out. I, but, don't, I, I didn't pull that out. I don't um, know. So you can actually thread pieces of metal or something like that. It's a tap and die set, so okay. you can actually make threads into something with that. Um, so you can bolt it on. That's cool. Some staff 3D prints kind of peeking in there. Then there's a, a big thing of computers. Yeah. Right now we have a full um, classroom set of MacBook Airs uh -huh. so that you, uh, anyone that comes in can check out one of those computers and it should have the software that you'll need to use any of the machines on um and that that includes like the cricket and the cricket um embroidery machine and all machine 3d printers um some of these you might have to set up your own account but we'll have that computer for you um one 
good thing is most of the software we use is actually open source, so yeah. you can install it onto your own machine if needed. But we don't want to make you install all this stuff for the first time if you're just going to try out the vinyl cutter, so for example. Come in and grab a computer yeah. and. We really want to make everything just as easy as possible for someone coming in the first time. Yeah. As same as the person coming in the 100th time. Um, <laughs> We've had we, a few. We looked like we had several drawers of safety equipment. Uh, here are a couple of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You, the usual masks. I think we probably had masks probably, right, before? We, we, uh, yeah, we were the, like, the first place in La Library to like have a stockpile of masks sitting around. Uh -huh. So... Um, masks, uh, safety glasses, safety goggles. If you're like myself and you uh -huh. wear glasses, we have goggles that fit over your glasses. Yeah. Anytime you're cutting, you're soldering, or anything like that, you want to make sure you have safety glasses on. Um, we also have all these gloves. Um, two different styles we have. Those uh -huh. gray ones that are kind of underneath. Yeah. Or what you'd find at your typical hardware store, gardening center. But these um, kind of cloth blue ones, those are heat resistant and cut resistant. Um Resistant, not proof, so yeah. they don't make you Superman, but right. kind of helps lower that risk. That's great. And then underneath those gloves, are we have some work aprons, so if you're gluing a project together m midday before you go, you That's know, great. take a test. We don't want you having super glue all over you. And then looks like we have a, a little like set of stuff at the sink. Fully functioning sink. Um, this is also some of our other safety equipment. First aid kit, box of bandages. We have some um, heavy duty or soaps than what you'll find everywhere else. So if you need, need to get stuff off your hands before you go down to the atrium and eat. <laughs> um, we have some COVID supplies back here. We uh -huh. have some alcohol wipes. We have, you know, your standard um, paper towel roll, stuff like you just need sometimes. We also have our eye wash station. So if you that's that. That's the orange. The orange thing yeah. mounted on the wall there. Um, if you, you know, haven't listened to what I just said earlier, and you <laughs> weren't wearing your safety goggles, get something in your eye. Um, yeah. you, you can kind of flush your eyes out over the sink there it's, with that. It's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. We, you saw the fire extinguisher earlier. Yeah. We've luckily, never had to use that in the space. Um, but all have, we have are you prepared. had a fire in the space? Um, we the laser cutter can have some flames okay. and fires up, but um, we've never had any major fires in the okay. space. Uh, that's another reason that's staff operated. Is, yeah, yeah, um, that's that's great for that reason. We've had uh, some cuts and things like that happen that yeah. are, are going to happen um, with like our exacto knives and some of our cutting tools, but our e waste bin there. So please don't throw your batteries and stuff like that <laughs> in the trash. Well. Uh, that is awesome. Thank you for I, that. Was only a fraction of the drawers uh, when I was down in the makerspace. So I know there's even more hidden stuff yeah. in those drawers. And I also know because my office is next to it that <laughs> uh, one of the secrets of the makerspace is that we have a big, big old storage space outside the makerspace. So, um, what what's the path for someone who wants? something that we don't have. What, what do you recommend? Um, so there's a few ways. One, if it's something small, like a, you're out of super glue, or um, can we get some like iron on vinyl? Uh, talk to the staff in the makerspace. We have a running list of everything that you know people have requested. So yeah. small stuff that we can just order. Um, if it's a piece of tool or tech, you know, it, you can email me, or on the library's website, we have a request a device. Um, you can email the makerspace. Uh, if you see David or I, you can you know, let us know. And then if it's bigger, like, hey, I saw this new cool 3D printer on Kickstarter, you can do that suge suggested device for them or reach out to one of us. And um, yeah. yeah, I feel like some of the, I mean, from the very beginning, the space was designed in consultation with some of the great students that were building projects and and had needs on campus. So it's yeah. great that we're continuing that tradition. You know, our ma and our makerspace team is five, six full-time staff members and that same about number, nine or 10 students. So there's only less than 20 of us that kind of are in the space, but there's thousands of people that have used the space. So like they're on the internet more often, they see all this cool stuff happening in other departments. And so like, 
letting us know what what can we add, what can we you know, do is a huge. I always kind of push that. And I think we have time to open a kit. Do you want to um, pick out a kit and we'll open one and you maybe you can tell us a little bit about what these uh, what these kits are about. Yeah, we um, we have a few different ones that we brought in. We have our e-textiles kit. Uh -huh. We have our web VR kit, which we partnered um, with our friends over the virtual reality studio to kind of help get this together. And then our um, first of our make and take asynchronous kits. So um, I'll save the web VR for uh, I'll. When you, I'm guessing the virtual reality studio is yeah. on this list. So um, this is a just a Google Cardboard that we've put in this kit with some other um, a few other items to kind of help do this um, at home. Yeah. All these kits are kind of born out of the last couple of years where we want people to be able to do these making activities from the comfort of their own home. So I can open up the e-textiles kit and we can. So have you have you like supported students that aren't on campus? Have you? Yeah, so students that um, either weren't able to come to campus or, um, you know, a year and a half ago when no one was on campus, we were able to still do our classes and workshops and everything that we do. Um, you, know, just, you know, I remember sending kits all the way to, you know, California. We've sent some international kits even, so. It's fantastic. We have all these cutting tools and I just <laughs> forgot to bring one. So using, using a pen and my key. Well. So. You're innovating there before our eyes. So. Um, I think it's um, it's it's so great to be able to offer stuff for people to just do it on their own pace in their own place. But if people do need help with these kinds of things, do we help people outside of the makerspace as well, or do we do you have to come in the makerspace? So we do. So if you're, you know, if you can't find time to come over to the makerspace, or you have a bigger question that we you know, kind of can dive into, um, we have technology consultations um, from the library's web main web page. You can find that. Um, you fill out a consultation form, um, and then myself and other makerspace members look at that and kind of find a time to meet with you either in person in the makerspace or virtually over Zoom or. Um, any of the many platforms that way kind of can talk through your projects more and kind of help walk you through these. Some of these are accompanied by um, videos and um, Moodle projects like our um, Take and Make Kit. Um, this QR code here actually has a whole um, Moodle project page for it. So uh -huh. we'll kind of walk you through step by step. So that is awesome. We can kind of dive into the our e-textile kit. Let's see. Got some fabric. Looks like felt. So um, I, I recognize a battery. <laughs> yeah, everything. A thimble. Oh. More stuff. Um, what's that blue thing? That blue thing that I just pulled out. Yeah. There. So that's the kit. Okay. The box. That's a, that's, um, that's glue. I see. We've got glue. We've got the. We've got some felt. Do a little bit of organizing here. Yeah, here yeah. So, uh, we'll start off with the one that okay. you asked about. Um, yeah. This blue piece here. Um, this is a needle threader. So, oftentimes, for people's first time, even I still struggle with it, is uh, in this package here, we have our needles. So, getting that thread through the eye of that needle can be quite difficult, uh -huh. but what we can do, and this is kind of a, a little live demonstration, <laughs> it's a lot easier to get it through this much bigger hole. Oh, gotcha. And then you use that to... And then you can put that piece of metal, which is, you know, obviously more sturdy than... Yeah. Um, you can kind of push that. You, I did that backwards, actually. Yeah. You put that through the needle first. And then you, you put the... And then you put the thread through thread. there. Uh, that makes sense. And then you pull the needle off, and, and it's that, and that is cool. And so all these all these things are for someone to keep. Yeah. So if you're a student here at NC State, you can just come grab one of these kits. Yep. So 
um, we have all these things, and, and this is your kit now. So you now have some needles. So. And, and what are those little guys that you... These here, these partner with our battery holder, which okay. has an on-off switch uh -huh. and works with the battery that we put in the kit. N you then can connect those via the conductive thread. Uh -huh. So you can just say you threaded this needle, you can do the same thing with the conductive thread, attach those to these little LEDs, which have a positive and negative sign. So they're, they're lights, they're little lights. These are little uh, lights, yeah. So wow. Different, we try to put some different color ones in each kit. And I then don't know what they are at this <laughs> point, but... And so you can actually sew those on to to that felt, and you make yourself a wristband. Or yeah, make the yourself project a behind the e textile kit is making a a, a wristband yeah. that um, lights up whenever you snap it together. Ah, got it. Yeah, so you can kind of see that. So, so you're completing a circuit probably with the the yeah. snap, so we, which is we metal. We teach some basic circuitry um, using the snap as you know an on off switch um, when it's connected. Uh, when it's disconnected, it's off. When you connect it and snap it on, it's on. So you're actually completing that flow of electricity. Um, we've got some other colors of felt, so you can make some decorative elements. Um, you can kind of add your own personal flair. Um, That's fantastic. Symbol to kind of help with you know, some protection and stuff yeah. like that with sewing. Super glue, because you never know. You just might need a little bit more than this. This is the cutest little uh, super glue. Yeah, little containers. 0 .01 ounces. Yeah, of it's super like glue. it's just like the exact amount of super glue that you generally need. Yeah. And you, you saw that in the space. That's yeah. what we kind of switched to, rather than you know a letting a bottle. whole bottle go dry or whatever. Yeah. That's exactly. fantastic. That's so cool. So this is just one of the few kits that we have. Um, yeah. That we you know. We come to your class and we've t taught this. We have you know do consultations. We do workshops all the time with um, this that sort of stuff. That is so cool. And then uh, we have a plenty of these take and make kits. Mm -hmm. I don't know what our time looks like. But We're wrapping up. Yeah, yeah. but, but so. uh, I think um, we should definitely get people to go visit the makerspace if you have any questions. Do a tech consult. Uh, email us if you have suggestions and ideas for for things that we should be doing in the space, and um, you know seek Justin out and and his team of of, of specialists in the makerspace to answer all your questions. Um, so appreciate your time, oh, thank Justin. You. I, for I love talking about the makerspace. <laughs> yeah, so I, even if you just want to come talk to, about what the space is more, I like, just um, learned so uh, much today. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was great sharing. Uh, bottom right, you can stop streaming. <laughs>